Last year, I made a bold claim. I said that if you grow avocados, you are making the world a better place. Avocados make people happy. And happy people make the world a better place. So if you're growing an avocado tree, pat yourself on the back because you are making the world a better place. And since that video published, I have found a million people who agree with me. And of those million people, several thousand began planting avocado trees last year. And that's why I'm here today to invite you to grow an avocado tree along with me. This is episode one of a monthly series where we are going to grow an avocado tree together. Now, I don't know what it is, but there is just something special about this little piece of fruit right here that puts a smile on people's face. Come on over to the shade house with me. I'll talk about how this monthly series is gonna work and we'll get started planting our first avocado seed of 2021. This is our shade house. This is the place where our baby trees get their start in life. We use a shade house because baby avocados like partial light. In nature, that means under the canopy of the mother tree. For me, it means a shade house. For you, it's your windowsill or your patio, anywhere that gets partial light throughout the day. And you're here with me in the shade house today because you want to grow an avocado tree along with me and along with the rest of the subscribers to this channel. So before we embark on this project, right, before you crack open a delicious avocado and take out the seed and put that seed in soil, let's talk about what it really means to plant an avocado tree, what it really means to plant a tree in general, but I'm going to use avocados as the example, right? The minute you take an avocado seed, you put it in soil. I'm not going to do that yet because I don't, I don't want to kick off the moment, right? But the moment you take an avocado seed and put it in soil, you have begun to develop an organism that is going to connect the earth and the sun. Now hear me out on this. Just hear me out on this, right? Hear me out. You're going to take this seed, you're going to put it in soil, and you're going to take care of it for maybe two more years, right? Maybe three years. At some point, you're going to dig a hole in your backyard and plant this tree in the ground. That tree will develop roots, and those roots will spread out underneath the ground in your backyard, and the tree will attach itself to the planet, to the planet Earth. The tree is attaching itself to our planet, right? And while that's happening underground, above ground, the tree is throwing out branches, it's growing leaves, right? And it's spreading itself up and it's opening itself up to the sky. Now, why does a tree do that? A tree does that so its leaves can take light and convert that light into energy. Where does that light come from? It comes from the sun. So when you take this seed, you put it in dirt, you take care of it. Then you get that little seedling, right? And then you take that seedling and you put it in the ground. You have created a communication channel between the earth and the sun. You've connected two celestial bodies that are millions of miles away from each other. Now, I suggest you don't share this with your co-workers at work. You know, what'd you do this weekend? Oh, I created a communication device that'll connect uh, two celestial bodies that are millions of miles away from each other. We're going to just keep that part between us, right? But if you really sit down and think about it, that's what planting a tree does. It's amazing. And that's one of the ways you as an avocado tree grower make the world a better place. Because you're connecting the earth to the sun. And you've created an organism that's going to take nutrients from the earth and energy from the sun. And it will use that energy to convert those nutrients into fruit. And then you and other people will eat that fruit. And then your body will take that fruit and convert it into energy. And you will use that energy to go throughout your day and do nice things for other people, right? So when I say avocados make the world a better place, they do. They do make the world a better place. And oh, by the way, while we're at it, these trees are taking carbon dioxide out of the air and producing oxygen, which is another thing human beings need to walk around the planet and do good things for each other. Planting an avocado seed is very, very simple. You need 
a one gallon pot. You need potting soil, the cheapest potting soil you can find. You need a little bit of 666 mix fertilizer. And you need an avocado. Now we're going to have fun doing this. Make a day out of going to Home Depot or the garden center, wherever you're going to go to, to get your pot and to get your soil. Make a day out of it, you know? Go out, stop, get yourself some lunch. Just enjoy yourself. Slow down. Be aware of what it is that you're doing. I want to see pictures of your progress. I want you to make little little selfie vids and tell us about yourself. And if you give me your permission, I will upload them in subsequent videos. Actually, I, I should have said this earlier. If you simply came here to learn how to plant an avocado tree, basically you fill a pot with potting soil, you take a seed, you bury it about three-fourths the way down, cover it, put some water, keep the soil damp, you'll get yourself an avocado seedling. But that's not what this project is all about. This project is all about giving you guys a little, a little solitude, a little something to enjoy yourselves, a, a little place to escape from the pressures of the world. Because I've been around about 50 years, and right now, right now the world is fine. It's, it's, I'm loving life, and a lot of people I know are loving life. But there seems to be this like force out there, this sort of collective energy that wants us to believe the world is a scary place and wants us to believe the world is a dangerous place and we got to block that out right you know so so this is where I come to to block it out this this is my fortress of solitude right this is when the world kind of wants to come crashing in on me I come out here to be with my my plants right with my trees like Superman had that little ice house up in the North Pole or whatever, you know, and he'd be like stuck in traffic and Starbucks got his order wrong and then Lois Lane calls up and she's like, we're going to my mother's this weekend for dinner. And Superman is just like, oh man, you know, and just, you know, he just flies to the Palace of Solitude and nobody could get to him there, right? Well, that's what it's like for me when I'm, when I'm in the shade house or down in the nursery or out in the grove amongst my trees. I'm just focused on that and all this crap that's going on around me just can't penetrate and I'd like you to do the same thing and as and as this project goes on over the next couple months and years right I I want to hear from you on that right I want you to dedicate a space to work on your tree and I want you to tell yourself you're not going to bring all that crap from the world if, if you've spent all day watching CNN don't bring that into your avocado workspace with you right if you've spent all day arguing with people on Facebook, right, set that aside, clear your mind, and go into your avocado workspace positive. And I'm going to teach you a technique to do that. But let's go ahead and plant our tree. The best thing about planting an avocado tree is you need an avocado seed. And in order to get an avocado seed, you need to eat an avocado. So at this point, pause the video. Go into your kitchen, prepare your avocado using your the best recipe you know, your favorite guacamole, or maybe you like to cut them in spears and put a little oil and salt over them. That's what I did last night with one of these delicious Monroes, and I just, I was in heaven, right? But I want you to sit there, and I want you to just be mindful of what it is you're doing. You're, you're eating an avocado. You're eating a piece of fruit that a tree created by taking nutrients from the planet Earth and energy from the sun and using that energy to turn those nutrients into the fruit you're eating. And then as your body digests that fruit, it will convert the fruit back into energy. And you're going to use that energy to plant your avocado seed. Be mindful of that. Go into that space. And when you finish that avocado, and now your body's all full of them sweet, sweet avocado calories, you got the energy to go out and plant something, I want you to go out to your your space. I want you to go out to that space you dedicated where you're going to work on your avocado trees and take your pot, fill it halfway with the soil you bought. Halfway. Then I want you to take that 666 fertilizer and just put a little sprinkle in, like not much at all, like maybe a, less than a teaspoonful even, right? And shake up your soil. Maybe stir it up a little with your hands, with your fingers. Now you notice I use my hands. I don't use a little shovel. I don't put gloves on. I like to use my hands because I want to feel the soil, the dampness in that soil. I want to smell it. I want to really be present in this moment 
And one way to do that is to engage as many of my senses as possible. You've, you've already eaten the avocado. That engages your sense of taste. Now you can engage your sense of smell with the soil, right? You could smell the fertilizer, and you could engage your, your sense of touch with, by touching the soil. And don't worry about it. You can always go wash your hands. It's not like you're administering a prostate exam or something. Just get in there and get to feel that soil and mix it up, right? Then take the second half of your soil. And fill your pot up to the top. Now I've got a pot that's full of potting soil. Again, just take your hands. Now all you want to do is put a little dent. Now 95% of you, maybe more, will be planting a Haas avocado seed because that's what 95% of the avocados you can buy in the supermarket are. Your seed will not be nearly as large as this one. It won't even be nearly as large as this one, which is one-third the size of this one, right? Your Haas avocado seed will probably be about the diameter of maybe a, a, a half dollar or maybe a little smaller than that, right? But make yourself a little dent in the soil and then take a look at your seed. Your seed has a bottom, which is this little belly button looking area here, and it has a top, which might come to a point or might be like just very subtle, but the belly button spot is very easy to to, to locate and identify. That's the bottom of your avocado seed. And you want to take that and place it belly button down into the soil. Then just press the soil around it. So about one fifth or one quarter of the seed is sticking above the soil. You're not going to bury your seed entirely. Then I want you to go back to your 666 fertilizer. And just do a little tiny bit, again, less than a spoonful, less than a teaspoon, right around the edge. Not next to the seed, because when these roots come out, we don't want to burn the roots. But around the edge of your pot, if you get too close to the seed, just sprinkle it back. And there we have a planted avocado seed. Next, you take a little bit of water, you water your pot. I just go around, saturate the soil. Whatever pot you get, make sure it has drainage in the bottom, and eventually the water will start to drain out the bottom of the pot. Once you hear that water draining out the bottom of the pot, you're good. You're done. Congratulations. You have just planted an avocado seedling and taken your first step to making the world a better place through avocado cultivation. But we're not done yet because this series is about more than just the mechanics of planting an avocado tree. It's about how we're going to make the world a better place. And I mentioned earlier that I could give you an exercise you will use to clear your mind of all the negative crap that we're being bombarded with on a daily basis. Now I'm going to use this clear plastic cup to kind of illustrate what I'm talking about. This clear plastic cup is my brain. And this, I'm pouring thoughts into my brain right now. This is just nice clear water, right? And look at that, oh, my brain is full of thoughts. My brain is full of thoughts. It's always full of thoughts. I've tried to go to like meditation classes and yoga and they say like, clear your mind. I'm like, dude, I can't, I can't clear my mind. I've tried. I, I just can't. I can't clear my mind. My mind just has thoughts racing through it at all times. I probably engage or entertain like 1% of them and I reject 99% of them. And thoughts can be positive or negative or anywhere along that continuum, right? They can be anxiety inducing thoughts or there can be calming thoughts. Well, I'm going to use this red dye to represent anxiety-inducing thoughts, right? And here's what happens. Here's what I see happen all around me. We wake up every morning, and the, the first thing we do is, like, we go online, and maybe we have a Twitter account, and we, we see a tweet that we disagree with politically or something like that, right? Drip. There's the first negative thought. We're not even out of bed yet. We haven't even swung our feet down to the floor, right? We're just on that phone, and there's a negative tweet, and then... Maybe we reply to that tweet with something, and that's a little negative on our part. And drip, there's another negative thought. Then we set the phone down, we go brush our teeth, we come back, and three people replied to our comment. Drip, drip, drip. There's three more negative thoughts that have entered our mind, right? We haven't even started our day yet. Down the steps, we go to the kitchen, and we have a little TV in our kitchen now, because it's not enough to just have a TV in your living room these days. you got to have one in the living room, one in the bathroom, one in the kitchen, one in your bedroom, because God forbid somebody say something on the news, and you're not staying informed, right? 
So down into the kitchen you go, you flick on the TV, and there's your favorite news channel, right? ABC, NBC, CNN, Fox, whatever the case, Fox, whatever the case may be, right? And that drip, now it goes to a flow. Blam! You're sitting there making your waffles or your French toast or whatever it is. And that nice, clear, positive frame of mind you had when you first opened your eyes has now been poisoned. And most of us are going through our entire day like that. We haven't even left our house yet, and we're completely agitated about things that have absolutely nothing to do with us. Meanwhile, we have a whole bunch of things waiting for us at work or wherever it is we're going that are going to agitate us. And those are the things we need to deal with, but we've already started our day redlined. We're already outraged. We're already agitated, right? Why do we do that to ourselves? If... if if you had a device in your kitchen that you went down to every morning when you pressed the button to turn it on, it gave you an electrical shock, you would do it once and you would never go back and do it again, right? But for some reason, we go downstairs every day and we put, a, we put that TV on and bam, we just give our nervous system and our emotions a negative shock for, for the next 40 minutes until we leave for work. And then as soon as we get in the car, we just keep it going with the radio, right? Well, you might ask, how does planting an avocado seed help me with that? Well, let me show you how, because this is what I do. So now that you've planted your tree, I want you to put it in its spot and then sit down and look at it and think about that tree and think about it, what it means to plant a tree. Not that whole thing about connecting the earth and the sun, right? That's a little hokey, true, but hokey. But think about the moment you just experienced, the moment you put that seed into the soil. What did you do? You created life. You created a 40, 50, 60 year story. What is that story? Are you a young, recently married person living in a townhouse, saving up, a, saving up to get a down payment so you can eventually buy a house with a backyard? And by the time you do that, you'll be ready to plant this tree? And by then, maybe your first child will have arrived? And then by the time this tree is producing fruit, that child will be old enough to kind of run around the yard, right? Well, think about that. Create that story and create it in detail. How big is your yard? What does your yard look like, right? And push out some of them anxiety-inducing thoughts. And the more detailed you get, the better. So the morning you go out to plant your tree, is it hot? Are you sweating? Do you have to have a little Gatorade with you to keep hydrated? If you do, what flavor? Is it the orange Gatorade? What does that Gatorade taste like? And as you're, imagine, as you're imagining what Gatorade tastes like, you ain't thinking of like some senators that you never heard of sex scandal, right? What are you wearing? You're wearing that old pair of cr cruddy sneakers that you do your gardening in? Do you have like these olive drab, you know, pants and shirt and a flappy hot, fl uh, floppy hat that you do your gardening, right? Do you have them gardening gloves that are like too big for your hands? And what's it like when you make that first dig into the ground where you're going to put your tree, right? What sound does the shovel make as it hits the dirt? Does the smell of that dirt waft up to your nose? Is the soil sandy? Maybe the soil's rocky and when you hit with the shovel some, some, some little flecks of Little flecks of rock flick up and they hit you in the cheeks, right? That happens to me here. The more detailed you get, the more you're controlling the thoughts that are going into your head. And look, our water's getting less and less red. We're pushing out the negative thoughts, right? And now it's five years later and your tree is mature and it's producing fruit. And you're now on to your second child who's kind of like running around the yard in diapers and they want to... They want to pick an avocado, right? And they walk up to the tree and grab it and they pull and pull and pull and they can't get it and then, you know, snap and boom, you know, they fall onto their butt and laugh, right? They're holding that avocado and they're so proud of themselves and someone got it on video. Maybe that's your story, right? What does that laugh sound like? And what do you do? You run and you take that avocado and maybe you have a spot in your kitchen where you, you set them and let them ripen, right? So now here you are, you're sitting in your space and you're, you're, you're looking at your seed that you just planted, right? And your tree and your story is now five years old, but that tree is going to grow to 10 years old. 
What's the story at year 10? That tree will be 20 years old. That tree will be 30 years old. And maybe that little baby who pulled the avocado, maybe that little baby is now married and has a child of his own, right? And maybe he bought his own property and now he comes to your house and says, you know what, I planted an avocado seedling. I want to take a clipping from your tree, grandma, grandpa, whatever. And I want to graft it and plant a tree in my yard, right? And now you're really, you're really down the rabbit hole with this story here, but you're really taking it far, right? 30 years down the line. And now this little organism you, you started today is giving someone pleasure 30 years from now. And maybe that tree will grow up and that grandchild will have a kid and that kid will be in diapers and pull it out of the tree, right? And, and this story can go on for 100 plus years. And the beginning of that story was this moment right now when you put that seed in soil. So in summary, it's very easy to plant one of these avocado trees, right? You just need the potting soil, the seed, a little bit of fertilizer, a little bit of water. Keep the soil damp and you'll be fine. But before we go, I want to make a request. Go to the contact section of this YouTube channel and you'll find my email. And email me your story. What's the 10 year, the 20 year, the 50 year, the 100 year story for the avocado seed that you planted? If you're comfortable writing, share it to me in writing. If you'd rather just kind of look into a, the camera and give me a selfie, go ahead and do it that way. Keep the selfies short because they'll lose resolution if it's too big of a file. But tell me your story, and if you give me permission, and I could fit it into a future video, I'll use it in a future video. But I'm, I'm curious uh, if, if y'all wanna, if y'all are gonna sit down and, and, and create the, the story of, of your tree. And if you do, please share it with me. And if you're someone who really doesn't want to get their hands dirty and really doesn't want to plant their own tree, but you think you'd like to have one in the yard so you can pick fruit from it at a later date, we sell already grafted trees at our website, which is guacfarm.com, G-U-A-C-F-A-R-M.com. We sell these stickers, we sell these t-shirts, and when our fruit's in season, we sell a heck of a lot of that also. But instead of going out to guacfarm.com right now, I want you to sit down with your tree, create your story. While you do that, I'm going to sit down with my tree and create my story. And I will see you on the next video.